que es la orden que se le cuenta, que es más desire that I should chastise them, and the people shall be gathered against them, and they shall bind themselves in two fellows. I want to hear them, and Ephraim, double portion, is as an heifer that is taught and loves to tread out the corn. But I pass over upon her bed. That means God took charge of double portion in your life. Uh, and I'm going to make Ephraim to rise. Judah shall plow. Well, look at your neighbor. Stop right there. Wait a minute. Hold up. Say, 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 let me help you with this uh, a Bible language here. Look at him and say, you got a double portion riding on this service today. See, Ephraim means double portion. I don't want to leave nobody. Look at him and say, don't play, don't play. When it's time to pray, open your mouth. You got a double portion riding on this thing. He said, even God said, I'm going to make Ephraim to ride. Tell him my double portion is riding on. Don't blow your flow in my road. If you ain't going to praise him, get away from me. Because I need all my double. Tell somebody, I need double everything. I'm talking about no double that gum. I need a double blessing up in the house. And if you ain't gonna open your mouth and lift your hands and say, excuse me while I get some of your devil, because there's a devil part in the rise. And then he says, I'm gonna make Judah to do what? Plow. That means today, today. Look at your neighbor and say, your praise gonna work for you. Woo! That's too deep for some of y'all. See, you've been working your praise, but today, God is saying to you right now, your praise is gonna do all the work. Uh, the harder you praise me today, the harder that praise is gonna take Y'all done messed a whole lot of them up, but they didn't start finding the player. 
say blessing and we ain't gonna go. I wanna talk to you very briefly from this subject. Something is about to break. Something is about to break. You've been wondering what's happening in my life. Can't remember something is about to break. I'm wondering why do I keep coming to church? Can you remember something is about to break? Why are people leaving this church and going up? Tell us what something is about to break. Why is God pushing people out of my life that have been in my life a long time? Tell your neighbor, because something is about to break. And God don't want them around, blood sucking off of your. <laughs> God, 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 got some stuff is for you. It ain't for nobody else but you. And God knows that they are in your space. But when the blessing comes, the first thing you're going to do is break them off. So why did I have to get the body to set up? Because you can't stand the blessing that I'm about. If there's anybody here, I feel like it's a set up. God is pushing people away from me. But I'm going to have more money. I'm going to have more talk. I'm going to have more peace. is about to break. He's got to straighten some things out in the circumference of our text. Hosea's job. Can I teach just a moment? Hosea's job is to shout here. Because of their inconsistency in their behavior to the poor God, they have had inconsistency in their blessings. When you are inconsistent, you go to church sometimes. You pray them when everything is all right. You go to Bible study for the wrong reason. You are schizophrenically inconsistent in your behavior for God. What if in a relationship the man, the woman you love was inconsistent and she loved you sometimes. He, he said he loved you sometimes. Sometimes he helped with the rent but sometimes he had, he had no responsibility. <laughs> God said my relationship with you is like a husband and a wife. And if you don't want your wife to stay out all night and say, baby, why didn't you come home last night? Because I didn't feel like your wife last night. Whether you felt like it or not, I'm married you. You bring yourself home. That's what God is saying. Don't tell me you didn't come to church because you didn't feel oh God on here.
were consistent. They came to the school. They gave the teacher permission to wash in your head with a drum stick. My father would say, after the crack, they called me. They were consistent. Then there came a generation that knew not God because the former generation had not passed to them the things that God had instructed them in the whole faith generation to pass to them. And God said, I give you one more command, Moses. Make sure this word passes from generation to generation. How am I going to do that, God? Because they speak rap music and we speak English. How am I going to do that, God? Because they're on the street stars and I'm buying my next tape off the shelf. How am I going to reach this crazy generation? They wear Tim's and I'm still crossing the state of Adams. How am I going to reach out and get them, God? How am I going to get up in there when you got uh, Run DMC and all these other brothers that can speak to them and they respond to them quicker? He said, I can put the responsibility on the children to get the word down from you. I put the responsibility on you to bring the word down from the children. And the same way I left glory and I came down on your level to deal with you. Get out of that pulpit and get down in the hood and get that word down. Preach black man. Right? So, I've got this job, God. You made a reference up here in the verse. You said since the sin of Gibeah. Now Gibeah is the earliest age of the church. The church has been in this condition for a long time. Uh, for a long time. They've been messed up for a long time. Slap your neighbor and say, you know some people that have been messed up for a long time. They didn't, they didn't just get like that. Your cousin was like that when y'all went to high school. Uh, for a long time. They are in total spiritual decay. Uh, have you ever been in total spiritual decay? You just going down, down, down. First it happens suddenly. You don't start going to the church no more because you heard something about the preacher you didn't like. So first you just stay home one Sunday. Then you stay home another Sunday. You end up totally spiritually decay. Tell somebody, don't let that happen to you. That's what happens in Israel here. And so they are in spiritual decay. And now the prophet, this is what happens, has to suffer because Israel is up. Wait a minute. You can be as anointed as you want to be. But if everybody in your house is crazy, tell somebody you see us. I'm anointed, but I got a crazy family. I'm anointed, but this house is mad. Have you ever been in a place? Do you understand that no matter how saved we are, the murder rate in Bloomington is relative to all of us. You not know, understand it. Even though I'm an anointed man of God, I live in a city called Wilmington. And so these crazy police riding around, pointing their brothers and sisters on the street like they shoot them going pop. That affects me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Maybe it don't affect you. Man, listen. So now, Hosea is affected by the pain of Israel. And right here is where the drama starts. How about when you've been in pain and you feel that everybody else is pain? God's answer is to give you more pain. You be like, what you didn't hear me, brother? I said I was hurt. I needed some relief. You 
don't pay child support, then your whole system is white. And people in the house feel the pain because they live there. Because you talk about, oh, she you never see the other way from the That ain't mine. I'm going to be real for that. And so he says, God, I have pain because Israel is giving us in hell. But then God's answer is, I'm going to give you some more pain. Since you feel in the people's pain, God said, I want you to know a little bit about my pain. So first Hosea has the pain of the people, then he has the pain of the Lord. How do you say that, Pastor? Well, you see, Hosea doesn't know it, but he's going to marry a prostitute named Gomer. And Gomer's going to cheat on him. And Gomer's going to leave him. In fact, Gomer's going to have kids by two other cats. And Hosea ain't going to know whether they're his kids or the cats that he slept with. And Hosea's going to have to go get Gomer and bring Gomer home and wash her up and say, I love you anyway, but she's going to sneak out again and sleep around again. And he's going to have to go to the ghetto. And he's going to find her in the hooker house. He's going to find her prostitute. And he's going to take her home. Maybe you say, I wouldn't do that. Hosea was raised in church. He's a bishop. Son. He got to go be his wife. Everybody's talking about it. Why is he still with her? Why is he still messing with her? Because I love her. Why do you love her? I don't know. I don't know that one day and I love her. Right here. It is right 